where at least 31 migrants have drowned while trying to cross to the UK from France. There are five women and two children among the dead, according to the French authorities. At Westminster this evening, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson held an emergency committee meeting to consider the government's response while saying he was shocked, appalled and deeply saddened by the news. President Macron said that France would not allow the channel to become a graveyard and called for a joint European approach to the crisis. An air and sea rescue operation has been underway for several hours. Well, first, let's join our correspondent, Lucy Williamson, in Calais for the latest. Well, as you say, the rescue and recovery operation has been going on here into the night, but there are very few details so far about who the victims are or why their boat sank. And there are questions already being raised in the local media here about whether it was simply bad weather, high waves, or whether it might have been hit by something like a container ship. No confirmed details as yet, but this town, this country, is today simply coming to terms with what the government is calling a day of national tragedy. This is a tragedy that began with hope. Where are you going now? Go UK. Go UK. The water, nothing to be afraid of yet. Several boats set off from this coast at first light this morning. This one reached British shores without disaster. But a flimsy boat, dozens of desperate people. The warning signs have always been there. And today, one of these boats never arrived. As far as we know, 33 people capsized off Dunkirk and Calais. As of now, 31 people died or were not resuscitated. And there are two survivors who are currently being treated and whose lives are also unfortunately in danger. A local fisherman spotted the passengers floating motionless in the water. Helicopters and boats were scrambled to the scene for a rescue operation, but many had already drowned. This disaster underscores how dangerous it is to cross the Channel in this way. And it also shows how vital it is that we now step up our efforts to break the business model of the gangsters who are sending people to sea uh, in this way. This was the fear that hung over all the politics, all the debates. Inside this hospital tonight, more than 30 people have been declared dead. Two others are fighting for their lives. The crossing season this year has stretched well into the winter weather. It's a lucrative business for the people smugglers, but it's men, women and children who've paid the price. But people here in this Calais migrant camp are so determined to reach the UK that no one we met tonight said they'd change their plans. Ode tried crossing yesterday, but gave up because the waves were too high. France's coastline has never been as simple to secure as the Eurotunnel or the Calais port. Smugglers have made the most of that. These people are moderns, and the poor migrants who have been coming from their country, we have spent months and months to come to here, and we are dying there, so close to their, to their dream. Many more migrants arrived in the UK today. Good publicity for the people smuggling rings. But it often takes many attempts. And those who have capsized before have told me what it's like waiting in the water for help to arrive. One thought in their minds as the minutes tick by. What if it doesn't get here in time? Well, four suspected people smugglers believed to have been linked to this crossing have now been arrested, French officials say. But for all the arrests here, all the deterrence over the months and years, there's no shortage of customers for this industry. And I've spoken to many people this year who've had to be rescued themselves from the waters of the, channels, of the channel and they keep on trying. And I think that says a great deal. Lucy, many thanks for the latest there. Lucy Williamson, our correspondent uh, who's uh, monitoring events in Calais. Well, only yesterday, the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, said that further talks were taking place between the UK and France to try to stop the crossings. So far this year, an estimated 25,600 migrants have crossed the channel to the UK, and that is more than three times last year's figure. Our home editor, Mark Easton, has the latest. The lucky ones made it. Dozens of migrants, men, women and children reached the coast of Kent today, oblivious to the tragedy in their wake. 
This year has seen record numbers crossing the channel in small boats, more than 25,000, three times the number in 2020. There aren't more asylum seekers asking for sanctuary in Britain. It's just that increased security and COVID have combined to make traditional routes by road, rail and air much less viable. So the smugglers and the migrants have switched to the most precarious route of all in tiny craft through one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world. The United Nations International Organization for Migration has been trying to keep track of the deaths in the channel. Counting between eight and 30 people drowned each year since 2014. Before today, the figure for 2021 was at 15. Now it looks certain to be the worst year on record. So how should the politicians respond? There are two distinct strategies, to make it easier for the migrants or to make it harder. The government believes the answer is to get tough, describing all those who come to the UK through unofficial routes as illegal migrants, limiting their rights and making deportation easier and quicker. One plan had been to use border force vessels physically to push migrant dinghies back into French waters. But this tragedy will reignite concerns for the safety of those on board small boats. Now I do think the time has come to make sure that there are people on the beaches from the UK, from France and from other European countries to make sure that there are patrols sufficient to stop the boats leaving, to make sure they are turned around while they are still close to French waters. Charities and campaigners argue that the only long-term solution is to provide official safe routes to the UK for all those fleeing war and persecution. While the Home Office proposes more pathways from refugee camps, the Red Cross is among those who believe the UK should open its borders and its hearts. We need to do two things. We need to create safe and legal routes for people to get here through planned resettlement programmes and family reunion. Um, and we also need to have a safe and fair asylum system here so that people, when they've made their journeys, can claim, can claim asylum and be fairly assessed. We need to be disrupting the business models of these vile people smugglers away from the coast and we need as well to be looking at properly managed safe and legal routes. Politics often gets in the way when searching for long-term cooperative answers to these international challenges. But amid the grief, there is a hope that today's tragedy may prove to be a catalyst in finding commitment and agreement across borders. Mark Easton, BBC News.